Hello, my dear friends. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Top Lesson for You. Dear friends, uh, as you know that we are discussing about the bones of the upper limb. Right? So, you can see on the screen we have uh, uh, the, we discussed about the divisions of the upper limb, how uh, our upper limb has been divided. It is divided into shoulder region, an arm region, a forearm region, and a hand region. We had uh, we have had a lecture on uh, all of these uh, regions. Then we discussed about the bones and the first bone that we have discussed uh, regarding the bones of the upper limb was your clavicle bone. You can see all the external features of the clavicle bone are present on the screen and you can, I hope you have watched these lectures. Then we discussed about the anatomy and the um, external features of the scapula. So here on the screen you can see the scapula. Now we are discussing about the anatomy of this uh, humerus bone, the longest bone of your upper limb. So let's go for it. The humerus bone, you can see on the screen we have the position of the humerus bone on the red bones. You can see they are mentioned. These are the humerus bones. So about the humerus bone, first of all, it is the bone of your upper limb. First thing. Then... Uh, I, as I have written there, then it is the longest bone of your upper limb. In your upper limb, you have no longer bone than this bone. So this is the longest bone. Then we say that proximally, right, it makes the glenohumeral joint. So here we have the scapula and this is the glenoid cavity, right? And this is the humerus bone. So this is the head of the humerus. So this is the proximal end. This is the upper end. Now proximally it makes the glenohumeral joint which is also known as the shoulder joint. So this is the glenohumeral joint, right? And then we know that distally it makes the humeroradioulnar joint which is also known as the elbow joint. So here will be your humeroradioulnar joint here. So this is also known as the elbow joint. So proximally it makes the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint and distally it makes the uh, humeroradioulnar joint. Now for the side determination of this bone, how to determine either this bone is from the right side or from the left side, how to determine it? First of all, we should know that this bone in its upper end, it is a little bit rounded and its lower end, it is a little bit triangular in shape and flat. Right? Upper end is a little bit rounded. and You can see here the lower end is a little bit flat and triangular. So first you should keep the upper rounded end superiorly and the lower flat end inferiorly. Then there is a head and the upper end there is a head. You can see the rounded head. This rounded head should be kept medially upward and backward as you can see i have written there the head is medially upward and backward and the olecranon fossa is posteriorly so look here here you have in the posterior surface of the lower end there is a big fossa here and only one fossa interiorly it has two fossae i will discuss about them but posteriorly it has only one fossa this is called the olecranon fossa where the olecranon process of the ulna bone will enter here so this is olecranon fossa so this olecranon fossa should, should be kept posteriorly and the head of the humerus should be kept medially you will recognize the bone is the right humerus or the left humerus so let's do it first of all the head is medially right then the olecranon fossa is posteriorly now look you will find that this is an a left humerus bone right now here we have Another humerus bone, here we should keep the head medially and the olecranon fossa posteriorly. You can see here this is the olecranon fossa, so this is posteriorly. Now you can see the head is medial and the olecranon fossa is posteriorly. So if I keep it like this, I will recognize that this is the right humerus bone. Right? So for side determination of it, only two points, two important points should be remembered. First, the head is medially. And the olecranon fossa is backward or posteriorly, you will recognize the side determination, the side first. Then, my friends, let's go for the external features of this bone. This bone, as you know, it's a typical long bone and, and all long bones is divided into two parts, into three parts. The proximal epiphysis, the distal epiphysis and the metaphysis or we say upper end, lower end and a shaft of this bone. So we have here... This bone is divided into an upper end and a shaft and a lower end because it's a long bone. That's so simple. Now, 
the external features of the upper end of your humerus bone what are those first there is a head and you can see here we have the head of your humerus here so this is a rounded head that our humerus bone has this is the head right a rounded head which makes the glenohumeral joint okay this is your this is the head of the humerus bone if you have the bone in your hand you will recognize very simply this is the head then the head is rounded okay medially backward and upward we know it if you keep it in in, a, in its anatomical position you will see that look the head is going a little bit backward medially and upward right then it joins with the glenoid cavity to make the shoulder joint it joins with the glenoid cavity to make the shoulder joint that's so simple right friends okay so in the upper end there is a head then there is an anatomical neck so you can see on the screen also this black color right this is the anatomical head of this humerus bone so I will show you here this is the anatomical head of uh, sorry anatomical neck of this humerus bone with this green color that I have uh, shown you here right friends we are just discussing about the external features of this bone so this is the anatomical neck then after the anatomical neck there is a lesser tubercle there and there is a greater tubercle there so if you keep the bone in its anatomical position this tubercle which is little bit interiorly this is the lesser tubercle and this tubercle which is little bit laterally this is called the greater tubercle so let me color them with black this is your lesser tubercle right friends okay this is lesser tubercle and you can see this big tubercle here this is uh, called the greater tubercle so we have two tubercles in the upper end of your humerus bone right so look carefully anatomical position this is the lesser tubercle and this is the greater tubercle you can see it very very clearly right and in between these two tubercles there is an intertubercular groove there there is an intertubercular sulcus there right which is called the bicipital groove right so in between the two tubercles there is a uh, there is the depressed part which is called the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove so we have a head then we have an anatomical neck then we have a lesser tubercle and then we have a greater tubercle and this greater tubercle is mentioned by three Im uh, impressions the upper middle and the lower and all those impressions are for certain attachments of ligaments and tendons to it so we will discuss them in the section of the myology we will see there so here we have this lesser tubercle you can see if you follow the pointer and then we have the greater tubercle here right friends and then in between the two tubercles there is an anterior tubercular sulcus which is here which i've mentioned here to you guys and it's also known as the bicipital groove and this groove has a medial and a lateral lip that's so simple look carefully this is the bone and this is the lat medial lip of it and this is the lateral lip of it so it has two lips the medial lip and a lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus right and then there's an ap5 surgical neck right how we know it this is a surgical neck so look carefully let me show you with this green color again here we have another neck of this bone which is called the surgical neck so here is your surgical neck so above there is anatomical neck below there is surgical neck and then there is an epiphyseal line you can see there on the screen also there is the epiphyseal line present there right okay so this is the epiphyseal line which is uh, uh, which is also known as the growth plate so here we will have the epiphyseal line which i which i have uh, colored with red right so this epiphyseal line okay friends so what were the structures what are the external features in the upper end of the humerus bone there is a head there is an anatomical neck yeah you can see okay then there is a lesser tubercle then there is a greater tubercle then there is an anterior tubercular sulcus and then there is a surgical neck and then there is a epiphyseal line 
right friends these were the ex the, the external features of the upper end of the humerus bone right now let's go for the shaft of the humerus bone so the shaft of the humerus bone you can see friends the upper end is a little bit rounded right the upper shaft is a little bit rounded but the lower shaft if you come down it becomes a little bit triangular one angle here one angle posterior interior interiorly right like this and one angle here the posterior surface is totally flat right so we say that the upper half is rounded and the triangular lower half the lower half is triangular the upper half is totally rounded and the lower half is triangular this triangular lower half bears three surfaces and three borders and you can see here the bone we have all these uh, the, the upper half is rounded and the lower half is what triangular and it bears three surfaces and three borders and we will discuss these in the next lecture so be with us